My name is Michael Brennan. I teach painting in Pratt's MFA program and at Pratt in Venice. This would have been my third semester teaching at Pratt in Venice before everything was waylaid by pandemic. I miss Venice terribly and I've been giving some thoughts on how the program has affected me as an artist and how the program affects my painting students there too beyond my instruction in the classroom. I had been to Venice previously, but it's interesting to me how the program has changed me both as a painter and a person in many unexpected ways. The first summer I was an instructor in the program in 2018, I audited all the classes to see how our teaching interconnected to get a feeling for the full texture of the program. I've always been the kind of painter that's fascinated with materials, the full range of items, ancient and contemporary, available to artists. It takes a lifetime to accumulate this knowledge. There are so many materials. I have been working with lapis lazuli some. I exhibited a few paintings composed of this pigment in my last solo exhibition in 2018. I was delighted when I took Professor Diana Josalfi's materials class, where we took a deep dive into the examination of lapis lazuli, malachite, and orpiment, among other staples of Venetian painting. No painter can underestimate the importance of Venetian painting. Venice is where painterly painting was invented, specifically in the work of Titian. Wolfland, the art historian, covers his contribution at great length. One of my favorite days in the program is when the entire group visits the Academia. Currently, Titian's last painting, his last great masterpiece, the Pieta that was intended for the artist's tomb, is hanging in a hallway. One can stand a few inches from this great painting and examine spots where Titian modeled the paint with his fingertips over 400 years ago. It's deeply inspiring. The manufacture of glass has a long history in Venice, and the Venetian painters often added powdered glass to their paint. Powdered glass does and does not increase the luminosity of paint. Glass is used as a bulking agent, changing the texture and movement of oil. It also aids in speeding up the drying time and controlling tone. Glass doesn't make the paint more reflective, but it does make it more refractive, suspending the pigment differently, changing the light reaction. I bought a pound of powdered glass from Kramer Pigments after returning to New York City. I don't make much work while I'm teaching at Pratt & Venice. I really want to be present for the students. However, because I'm an artist, painting is always on my mind. I keep a sketchbook like the students, and I try to internalize as much of the experience as I possibly can. I love the environment of Venice as much as I do the culture. We get unlimited Vaporetto passes for the duration of the program. I love the lagoon, and I spend as much time on the Vaporetto as I possibly can often taking the long way around the island's home. Venice's particular environment is key to the greatness of Venetian painting. Many artists in every era have responded to the dazzling interplay of water, light, and sky that's absolutely particular to Venice. I would ride around on the Vaporetto and try to internalize, record in my mind, this painterly interplay as much as possible. When I returned to New York, I began working on my Mare Internum series, which is still ongoing. Mare Internum is Latin for interior sea, and you see the term used on antique maps of the Mediterranean. For me, it's a term of location, history, and an indicator of personal interior exploration. I made these paintings with lapis lazuli, powdered glass, memories, all things I discovered or were highlighted by my experience at Pratt and Venice. To my great surprise, I was invited to exhibit work from this series the following summer, 2019, in Venice. In a three-person exhibition entitled Infinite Jests, including artists Monique Rollins and Haiwan Hong. The exhibition was a celebration of the program's 35th anniversary, held at the Chiesa Santa Elena, not far from the Biennale Pavilion site. This was a great honor for me to show my paintings in Venice, to show the work in the city that inspired me. Venice changed me as a painter. I became more invested in traditional materials, I experimented with powdered glass, and I switched to a more lubricious medium. Let me give a brief example of how Venice changed me as a person. We spend a great deal of time in the program together as a group, examining every aspect of Venice in depth, the art, architecture, the environment, local Venetian character and customs from sunup to sunset. My colleagues, Professor Giselfi and Copta, have tremendous expertise, both knowledge and experience on all of these subjects. Everyone learns so much in a short time during a summer at Pratt and Venice. What will I do this summer, 2020, without Pratt and Venice stuck in Gowanus, Brooklyn during the pandemic? I'm a painter, I'm happy to work in my studio. I go outside wearing a mask and I jog around the Gowanus Canal. The buildings are low there and one can catch some big sky, unusual for New York City. Gowanus is sometimes called the Venice of Brooklyn by commercial developers. I love Gowanus, it's my home, but this is comical. 
It may have canals, but there's no comparison to be made between a famously toxic zone, an industrial remnant, and a civilization, a former empire, that evolved and accrued over one and a half millennia. And yet, as I was jogging through Gowanus, I wasn't transported to Venice, but I did find myself looking more closely at exactly what was in front of me, appreciating it more fully. I think that's a gift from Pratt and Venice. It taught me to explore, examine, and investigate everything more closely, visually, materially, historically, and maybe most importantly, to enjoy what's immediately in front of me more fully. That's the great gift of the program that goes beyond the city itself. You go to Venice, and then you bring it home.